to Duggerman. We are here. Evil, evil loader out. Your girl is forever lonely. <laughs> and this game apparently. Barging over to the bookshelf, I begin knocking everything on to curl on it to the floor. Then panting fiercely, stalk over to Ayn's desk. I will not tolerate your attitude. Do you hear me? He's not even doing anything. I calmly snaps his finger and the mess in the room magically disappears. Completely spent, I collapse into a chair. May we speak civilly now, I suppose. <laughs> Note that you are here on a probationary basis, but to demand under anything under the presumption of some sort of advantage. Tis, tis a little more than ignorance. No one wants you here, nor do they care for you. But I can strengthen you, isn't that what Vincent said? Do you truly expect us to chase after you in the vain hope that you might dine to be useful? If you don't need me, then what keep me here? Dead or alive, it's clear you don't care about me. It is true, as a person, we do not care for you, but as a specimen, you are indeed interesting. Besides, we must study the effects of the altar's attacks on your person. Then it's doubtless stupid that you won't let me go. Use me as bait, kill your hex whenever I'm attacked. You won't even need to hunt down the monsters yourself. Insufficient knowledge is not a vice in and, in and of itself. You, however, are under the false presumption that the altids, like ordinary creatures, are exhaustible. A grave folly on your part. This is ludicrous! You tell me nothing, then fault me for not understanding what you're talking about? Finally, something I agree with her about. You must need, you're, you must need to accept that while living with us, you will know nothing. This is stupid! Why? You can't do this. It's a violation of my human rights. Guess what? They're not human, so they don't care about your human rights. You have no human rights because you are not human, and, and I'm not human too, apparently. Yet your desire to return to your former life may lead to many human deaths. Ultimately, you have no other choice. What about my life, my goals, my dreams, my aspirations? What of them? <laughs> Ayn's questions catches me off guard. I don't know how to respond to that. As much as I like to answer him, nothing sounds as persuasive as many human deaths. So I'm just a lamb being led to a slaughter for the peace and salvation of all mankind. You are not the first, nor will you be the last. I don't have the strength to continue arguing with Ayn right now. Besides, I'm only 20. It's not like I have any life experience to argue from. Since in my dejection, Ayn attempts to cheer me up. Uh, don't worry not, all the meter rooms here are at your disposal, and were created by me, and so they are quite safe. It may take you some time to fully explore them all. You're a liar. You said this place is safe, but like, in the very first playthrough we did, I died in that. Well, I guess I died in the place Basti took me, so never mind. Never mind. You're fine. It may take you some time to fully explore them all, which is just as well, as you cannot return to university at present. But if education is important to you, we have ways of securing a diploma. Should you need, I will allocate some of my time to ensure your knowledge is sufficient to obtain said merit. Although you must pass the requisite exams, of course. Then you may happily hang this certificate on your wall, and um, in a few hours, I shall create a door to your room at home. Perhaps you'll be more comfortable. I seems to have lost himself in a strange reverie, but then abruptly stops himself to rummage through his desk. Here, your card. At a loss, I simply stare at him. What is he offering me? Why do I even need it? Money, finance, and means of substance. Where would I use it? Are there shops in the meter rooms? There is shopping on the World Wide Web, of which you may liberally make liberal use. Although, do not think to accuse me of bribing your, fa you, your favor or any other such nonsense. How do you expect me to react then? I'm not saying thank you, you know? What's the address here? <laughs> what is the address here? I do not expect it. One more thing, if I can return to my room, can I see my mother, or am I stuck with these Quanzy jackasses from now on? I do not approve of your language, and that is my final warning. Or what, you'll murder me for calling your employees names, or whatever they are to you? I'll remove you from my office and you shan't find it again. Ouch, is that smoke I smell? Maybe I should ease up on the sass a little. Okay, okay, I get it, but what about my mom? You should be able to enter your former apartment through your bedroom door, and should you wish you may communicate with your mother, although I highly suggest you wean yourself from human interaction. I wasn't asking for your advice. What I am asking is that if my mother will be in any danger if I leave to visit her, I will extend the monitoring of your room to your entire apartment. The altids are not won't are, are not wont to, to, to visit such areas. If it's that easy, why don't you just monitor everything? Because it isn't that easy. I shrug. Paying me no further heed, I, 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 I keep wanting to say I am. I am returns to his papers. So you're saying this conversation is over. He continues to ignore me. And now you're lecturing me on how to be polite, lovely. Realizing that I won't get anything more out of him, I leave Ayn's office and return to a little cool where I spot an open door. Unsurprisingly, it leads into the party room. Not much of a choice, is it? Just wonderful.
The room is empty save for a sleepy-eyed bastard who doesn't seem at all interested in me. Sitting here twiddling my thumbs waiting for who knows what to happen is beginning to kill me. So I start fussing about pretending I'm busy as I inspect everything I can. I even try calling my mom but my phone is still not getting signal or internet. This is, the social isolation is driving me nuts. I should have snatched a few books from Ryan's office while I had the chance. This is boring as hell. No wonder Bassie sleeps all day. If I were him, I'd definitely do the same. An effort to distract myself from, encro from an encroaching claustrophobia and other depressing thoughts, I decide to whip up a meal since these freaks have a refrigerator full of food. When I finish cooking, I can't help but wonder if I should offer Sebastian some. We're evil in this route, no? I'm kidding, this sleep food for Basti. I love him still. Humanity first, huh? Well, I did make a lot. Maybe if he partakes, he'll feel ashamed for being such a jerk to me. Oh, now you're using him. Well, making him guilty for the food. Okay, whatever. I leave a serving on the party room table, and as I pass by, I bark. Food's on the table. You can eat it or throw it away or whatever. Without waiting for a response, I walk away. Surprisingly, upon returning to the guest room, I find a couple of books on the dresser. Maybe it's one of Mark's perverted little tricks, or I read my mind and sent them here. All kinds of wild theories begin swirling through my head, and they're all linked by the simple fact that even though the books appear to be a pleasant gift, their presence alone does not bode well for me. I'm not- I'm being shunned. Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> At least some news comes to the following evening. E thinking I hear a knock on my door, I call out to whoever, whoever is pestering me. But the only response I received are muffled mumblings. Angry and annoyed, I throw the door wide open and find Basti standing there. I'll take you to your door now. Finally, it's about time they move me to the royal suite. I'm getting tired of sitting in the peasants' quarters all day. I openly follow Sebastian, who leads me into the hallway and points to a door. Here. It looks just like the others. How am I supposed to tell them apart? Any door you choose can be your door. Or nonsense. You just need to take hold of the handle and believe that your room is behind it, and it will be. Just like that. No abracadabra, no sprinkling pixie ducks, dust on fairy bones. Just believe. Sebastian, maybe it's easy for you to walk around with only a handful of thoughts tumbling around in your head, but I'm a skeptic. And as a skeptic, it's hard to me ju to just believe that my room is behind this freaking door. If you want your room, then do it. Otherwise, you make it too sleeping in the guest room. Perhaps peeling your thoughts away like the layers of an onion might help you focus its useful ability. So you're saying I should meditate. Basti just yawns. Ugh, if I don't hurry to do this, he's going to end up asleep on the floor. Can't you explain it in detail. I'm panicking here if you haven't noticed. Yet you somehow find your way into the other rooms. The doors were already open, which made it easy. And the one time I managed to open a door myself, it was completely dark inside. Do you hear me? Dark. That darkness was a reflection of your ignorance. So now you're insulting me putting me down for your own benefit. I have you know that I, I am much more educated than a useless lump that always lying around on the floor. Girl, you need to pipe down with a sass. Errari humanium est. So, okay, I do not know what the language that is. I'm not impressed. Only braggarts and doctors use dead languages. And I don't see a stethoscope hanging around your neck. Bassy doesn't answer, he just yawns again. Are you going to help me out or not? Sometimes when I would speak with you, I question my decision to treat you kindly. The darkness you witnessed was a result of your own ignorance. Had you crossed the threshold, you would have met with a certain death. My girl should have just walked through so I could end this route so quick. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that even this hallway can kill me? You were the one who, who wished for oblivion. Hey, stop putting your words into my mouth. The more advanced the room, the greater it is able to manifest the quantity's innermost thoughts and desires. You're telling me this friggin' door corridor has a personality. But cool. Mm, yes, yes, perhaps. Bassy lays his hand against the wall, and a wave of energy seems to pass it into it. For a second, it actually feels like I'm inside a living being, and the feeling is so unsettling that I shake my head as if trying to cross, uh, toss the vile image from my mind. If this corridor is actually intelligent, then it can open my damn door for me. I was the one who left the doors open for you so that you couldn't, wouldn't get lost. I did as well, but now you need to learn how to do it yourself. Then help me. Girl, he just told you fucking how. What? I know you can. This isn't working. I need detailed instructions. One tiny mistake and I'm dead. Oh, now you're scared of death? Sebastian sighs. Am I invading your personal space? What? No? What the hell are you doing? Sexually assaulting me? I just want to help you. No. You just asked for help. He is like, I just want to help you. You're like, nah. This girl's irritating. Sebastian shrugs. There, 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 there is nothing more I can do. He vanishes through one of the doors, leaving me alone in the hallway. So I wait and I wait and I wait at least 10 minutes. I'm too damn scared to open the door myself. You did it before! When I realize I've been standing here for hours, my patience finally runs out and I scream, Bassy, stop being so mean. Just come out and help me already. 
Thankfully, he responds to my appeals and reappears, but the moment I look into his infuriatingly calm eyes, my anger boils, boils over. Alright, hurry up so I can take a ble bleach bath when you're done. Close your eyes. They only get in the way. Bracing myself, I'm feeling slightly sick to my stomach. Close my eyes. It vastly draws danger dangerously close. I take the handle together. That way, there is no worry of you making a mistake and walking into the in-between where only darkness lies. But his voice is so close and surprisingly soothing. Imagine that your room is behind the door. It's warm and cozy. Pitch your favorite things. Touch them. Feel them. Let the fragrance of the air surround you. I don't know if it's Bassy's voice or something, but the moment he places his hand on mine as I grip the doorknob, I find myself feeling only mildly irritated. When we open the door together. My room! Congratulations, you can also enter your mother's apartment using the same technique. Then he turns abruptly and disappears through another door. Really? He's just gonna leave me here. Given no other choice, I step into the room and close the door behind. What did you want him to do? He led you where you wanted to go! What else more did you want from him? Ugh, I hate this girl. It definitely looks like a real deal. Okay. What a good girl, the many sleepless nights and the scrounging of every last penny. All of it to make you the best wife you could be. I knew my heart wasn't all in vain. Looking somber, she places a beautiful cheese platter in front of me. The slices are arranged into a heart and garnished with strawberries. Of course, cake is normally served for such occasions, but what if you get fat? Your beau wouldn't like that, now would he? Did you really believe that text message I sent about the Maserati? Why did I ever write that? Mom's energy is overpowering, so I barely take the offered plate and begin to slowly pick up my food. And here I am already having trouble, troubling thoughts. That you're not 18 anymore and no longer so fresh. So fresh? Mom? <laughs> the comments began immediately after my 18th birthday and lasted for two straight years. I'm sure she'll be chalking me up as an old maid soon. Mom, do I need to remind you how old you are? Excuse you? <laughs> and you, my secretive little mouse, finding a groom behind my back. Well done, sweetie. Why do you think it's a groom, bro? What if it's just my boyfriend? We break up. What? Overcome with emotion, mom hugs me tight. I missed her and her attention, but as usual, I'm barely listening to what she's saying. She watches me as I eat while examining closely, then moves in for a better look. Mom. You you raise a bitch of a daughter. <laughs> I do not like my girl this route. Mom chatters away while I smile awkwardly, even though deep down I'm praying that she doesn't ask me for the last few days. Fortunately, she, she soon becomes distracted by a message on Degram. Degagram, and I'm able to discreetly slip away. If only things continue to be so easy. The second order of business may prove to be even more unpleasant than the first, considering the high probability that I'll be interrogated over the mysterious Maserati man. At least that's what I fear when I ask her about returning the cats I've been fostering. I usually handle any problems I have face to face with the manager of my volunteer group, but now I can't even leave the apartment. I guess I'll need to call her. I don't know why, but I feel like this is going to end poorly. With a not for my stomach, I dial the number. Once the call finally ends, I have to stop myself from sending the phone flying. Unable to contain my rage, I began screaming helplessly into the receiver and everything I've done for her. The very moment I asked for anything in return, I'm called a worthless traitor who's good for nothing but her big, big, big rack? Boobies? <laughs> well, maybe I can ask one of the volunteers for help, but I open our group chat only to discover that I've been banned. Not even blacklisted, just banned. Perfect, just perfect. It seems the vet's alpha female doesn't give a crap about my kitties. Ugh, and I don't even have any of the other volunteers' numbers. The situation is looking pretty bleak. Fuck it, go alone and die. <laughs> so I can move on to the next episode. <laughs> Forget this, I need to solve this problem now. I don't have time to worry about their belly aching. But the moment I step towards the door, I hear a voice inside my head. Hmm. Basti? I told you it's dangerous to go alone. Why is Basti so sweet in all these loader routes? If you need to leave, you can ask one of us to go with you. I'm sort of thrown off by the intrusion that I end up mumbling a response. Oh uh, yeah, okay, sorry, I forgot. The voice of my head fades and I freeze as I try to comprehend what just happened. After standing there for a good 10 minutes, I make sure nothing else strange happens and make I make my way to look cool. Maybe if I act like everything is fine, I won't, I won't aggravate the situation any more than I already have. Of course, they're all waiting for me in the party room. I'm here and always happy to help a damsel in distress. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Ragnar is a very- Well, Ragnar this time, alright? Very last person I wanted to see. But this is for my kitties. I'll try to be patient. Here comes Trouble walking through the door. She may not be polite, but she still is a lady and I am so- And so am I obliged to help. But first tell me, is a venture awaiting us? Well, in your own parlance. We need to overcome a vile dragon and deliver valuable cargo. I'm in. 
In the end, I am forced to endure several unpleasant minutes as I led Ragnar through my room while he cracks jokes about me in my apartment. And I pray, I desperately pray, that my mother has already left for work. If she were to catch sight of us, I don't know how to explain the presence of this big red-headed oaf in our house. Here, I need to take all these cats to that. Oh no, a feline epidemic. We need to make a kitty cat ship stat. Ragnar plops down on the floor and, has, and is soon surrounded by all the furry inhabitants of the apartment. How, how the fuck? How did he... How was he able to do that? And Ryu was just running around for them. But okay. Um, I don't know how I got Ragnar to help me. I don't know if he's like solely only able to be here because I'm in the evil loader route and Ryu is like solely in the kind route. Who knows? I don't know. I feel like if I attempt this a fourth time, I'm still gonna get loner out somehow. Which is beyond ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.